Hey, Donna Lewis here at Breathe Life Ministries, and we are going to be diving into Ezekiel chapter 3. I'm going ahead and starting just a little early to give you all time to jump on here uh, to share this video and uh, to, to get your Bibles and all that good stuff. Um, we have been in the book of Ezekiel. It is uh, an Old Testament book of one of the major prophets who prophesied to the people of Israel while they were in captivity uh, by the Babylonian Empire. A couple other con um, contemporaries of Ezekiel was um, Isaiah and, uh, excuse me, Jeremiah and Daniel. Uh, did Ezekiel know Daniel and Jeremiah personally? We're not really sure, but he was certainly familiar with their ministries. Um, so, I just, again, I want to give you time to jump on board here and to share this video with your other uh, friends on Facebook. And then we're going to get started here uh, in just a, uh, just a couple more minutes. I also want to make sure that I am able to see your comments. So, so just a second sure here. Able. And now I've got it set up so that I can see your comments. Now, sometimes there is a little bit of a delay between Zoom and Facebook. So if it takes me a minute to respond to your comments, don't worry, I will respond to them. If you are watching this on the restream, go ahead and leave your comments as well and I will respond to those. So now, um, yeah, we're a little early, but I'm going to go ahead and dive in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen with you. And when I uh, do that, I may not be able to see your comments right away. So again, if there's a little delay, just be patient. I will respond to your comments, each and every one of them. And I encourage your comments. I encourage your questions. Uh, it really makes a difference in the discussion when you participate. Remember, your questions may be someone else's questions as well. So be sure and ask them uh, because you are probably not asking just for yourself, believe it or not. You are probably asking on behalf of someone else who wants to know the same thing. Also, your comments minister to others. So please, again, I can't emphasize it enough. Please do comment and be part of this discussion. So what I'm gonna do right now is share the screen and we're gonna to go to the Bible and we are just going to read Ezekiel chapter three in its entirety. It's not that long. Uh, it shouldn't take very long to uh, read through it, but it's important because this chapter has a context and it's important that you see that. So we are going to share the screen and we are here in Ezekiel chapter three and I'm going to blow this up so everybody can see it. And here we go. We're reading from the New King James Version. Now, this is Ezekiel speaking, and he's speaking about what the Lord is saying to him in this moment. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll, and go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that scroll. And he said to me, son of man, feed your belly and fill your stomach with this scroll that I give you. So I ate and it was in my mouth like honey in sweetness. 
Then he said to me, son of man, go to the house of Israel and speak with my words to them. For you are not sent to a people of unfamiliar speech and of hard language, but to the house of Israel, not to many people of unfamiliar speech and of hard language, whose words you cannot understand. Surely had I sent you to them, they would have listened to you. But the house of Israel will not listen to you because they will not listen to me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard hearted. Behold, I have made your face strong against their faces, like adamant stone, excuse me. Behold, I have made your face strong against their faces and your forehead strong against their foreheads. Like adamant stone harder than flint, I have made your forehead. Do not be afraid of them, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they are a rebellious house. Moreover, he said to me, son of man, receive into your heart all my words that I speak to you and hear with your ears and go get to the captives, to the children of your people and speak to them and tell them, thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or whether they refuse. Then the spirit lifted me up and I heard behind me a great thunderous voice. Blessed is the glory of the Lord from his place. I also heard the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another and the noise of the wheels beside them and a great thunderous noise. So the spirit lifted me up and took me away and I went in bitterness, in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Then I came to the captives at Tel Aviv who dwelt by the river Kabar, and I sat where they sat and remained there, astonished among them for seven days. Now it came to pass at the end of the seven days that the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, hear a word from my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Yet, if you warn the wicked and he does not turn from his wickedness nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits an iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because you did not give him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man, and the righteous should not sin, and he does not sin, he shall surely live, because he took warning. Also, you will have delivered your soul. Then the hand of the Lord was upon me there, and he said to me, Arise, go out into the plain, and there I shall speak with you. So I arose and went out into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there like the glory which I saw by the river Kabar, and I fell on my face. Then the Spirit entered me and set me on my feet and spoke with me and said to me, Go shut yourself inside your house. And you, O son of man, surely they will put ropes on you and bind you with them so that you cannot go out among them. I will make your tongue cling to the roof of your mouth so that you shall be mute and not be one to rebuke them, for they are a rebellious house. 
But when I speak with you, I will open your mouth and you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God, he who hears, let him hear. And he who refuse him, refuses, let him refuse, for they are a rebellious house. So that is the um, entirety of chapter three. And this is what we're going to be diving into today is chapter th three. I'm, we, in our last discussion, discussed the very beginning of chapter three, and we stopped round about verse 12. What we're going to do is review that since it's been about two weeks since we last uh, had this study and refresh our memories. And then we're going to dive into the remainder of chapter three. There is a lot to cover, but be of good cheer. I have made notes for you and they will be available for you uh, with a link to the Google Drive at the end of uh, the video. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the notes. Now, again, when I do share screen, I cannot necessarily see your comments, but I will be checking back from time to time to make sure I'm not missing anything. And here we go. Let's go get into the notes now. Here we are. Let's go full screen. So the book of Ezekiel, we are learning from the past so that we can understand the present and prepare for the future. My name is Donna Lewis. This is Breathe Life Ministries. And I welcome you if you are a first time visitor to Breathe Life Ministries. Thank you so much for joining us. And I do encourage you to hit like and subscribe so that you can just stay uh, afloat with what's going on here at Breathe Life Ministries. Okay, so key verse in Ezekiel chapter three, receive into your heart all my words that I speak. Ezekiel, his name means strengthened by God. And throughout the entire book of Ezekiel, we're gonna see that theme again and again, the reminder that we are strengthened by God. He lived during the time of the first temple's destruction. He was in exile in Babylon along the Kabar River at the time that he received his vision. He was born the son of a priest, Buzi, and as a son, he was also called to be a priest in the temple, which was not going to be possible for his life because he was in exile and the temple had been destroyed. He was 30 years old when he was called into the ministry as a priestly prophet to the exiles in Babylon. In the last discussion we were in Ezekiel 3 verses 1 through for 3 where God hand feeds him his words. He had his words written on a scroll or a little book and on the front and the back were lamentations, mourning, and woe. It was not going to be a pleasant message that Ezekiel was being called to deliver. And he was literally fed these words by God and internalized him them. At first, it tasted very sweet in his mouth. And John the Apostle had a very similar experience in Revelation 10 verses 8 through 10, where he was given a scroll to eat as well. And it tasted sweet in his mouth, but later it made his stomach sick. In chapter three of Ezekiel, we find that it tasted sweet to Ezekiel, but later filled him with a deep emotional response of anger and bitterness. 
he was empathizing so deeply with God and his broken heart that he experienced these emotions himself. God prepares Ezekiel for his ministry to the Israelites. And we learn later that Ezekiel is handcrafted by God to be just as stubborn as the Israelites, just as hard headed, but he is surrendered fully to God. So he is stubborn for the ways of God. He is stubborn for the purposes of God and the character of God. And he is immovable and cannot be influenced by the hardness and the obstinance of Israel. So that leads me to ask you, what are your personality traits? And have you considered that the personality you have been born with is ordained by God and is a force for righteousness in the hands of God? Now we get into the remainder of the uh, the the chapter three of Ezekiel, and here we notice a great deal of detail going on. Um, again, I want to just go back to Ezekiel chapter three verses twelve through fifteen where we see all of this detail. So it stops here where God is again instructing Ezekiel to receive into his hearts, his heart, all the words that he speaks before he is sent to the captives. And he reminds them to tell them whatever it is that God is speaking and to not worry about it if they hear or don't hear. And then it says here that he's caught up by the Spirit of God. And he's transported supernaturally as he is processing the words of God's message, he begins to experience a bitterness and heat in his spirit. In other words, he was upset and not just a little upset. He was very upset. He was deeply empathizing with the spirit of God and his feelings of betrayal, his grief, his sorrow, his horror at the depraved behavior of the Israeli nation. And before he is allowed to speak. He sits among his audience. The Spirit of God transports him supernaturally back to his um, internment camp, his refugee camp there at the Kabar River, along with his with his community his people. And it says here that he sat where they sat and remained there astonished among them for seven days. Why is this significant? 
I believe it's a it's very significant significant for us to process this. And it's because oftentimes we as followers of Jesus Christ, we as the people of God, the bride of Christ, the church, we we forget a key component that first and foremost god's word is for us personally whatever god is saying to the people in general he is saying first to us. I'm reminded of the words of Paul. The words of Paul said, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The apostle John reminded us that if anyone says I have no sin, we're lying. <laughs> we are all fallen, broken, disobedient, obstinate people. And whatever the warning is to the community at large is first and foremost a warning to us personally as individuals who will stand before God. Secondly, the message is to us, not by us. Are you catching that? The message is to us, not by us. We are the messenger voicing the word of God that has been given to us first to then be delivered to our community as well. It would be as if a warning came across your cell phone that a tornado was getting ready to rip through town. So you text all your message, all your friends on your messenger, Get in your basement, get in your safe place. A tornado is tearing through town. You are not the tornado. You are, you are providing warning to yourself first of the tornado and to your community at large. So let me just take a quick look here and see if we've got anybody asking any questions, okay? We're doing good. So now let's go, let, let's go ahead and get to our share screen again. So again, God puts Ezekiel on a timeout. He puts Ezekiel on a timeout, a timeout in order to process the message for himself, to quiet his emotions, and to get things into perspective before he begins to actually speak the words that the Lord is giving him to speak. Oswald Chambers put it this way, reception of God's word implies personal devotion to the one who speaks it. You see, that time out allowed Ezekiel to embrace the message of God for himself, to honor and submit himself in devotion to the one speaking the message. 
to the sovereign Lord of hosts, God. Then in verses 16 through the end of chapter 3, verse 27, God begins to outline Ezekiel's mission. He was to be a watchman. Now, in that time of history, the job of a watchman was very critical. They would, they had, they would build high walls around their, their communities. And these high walls were designed for two purposes. First, the walls were a form of protection from rampaging tribes that would seek to pillage and destroy and kill them. It also allowed height to be able to see out over the territory and see any kind of dangers that were out there, fires, uh, storms approaching, and of course, raiders and whatnot, threats, threats to the community. The watchman was responsible to warn the community of dangers approaching. If the watchman failed in his duty, he was guilty of their death. If they were harmed because he failed to deliver the message, he was just as guilty as if he had done the damage. God was informing Ezekiel that he was now in the position of being a watchman for the people of Israel. And therefore, it was his responsibility to warn the Israelites of the danger they were in because of their bad conduct. And their conduct was not just a little bad, it was detestable. Um, they, were, they were committing heinous acts against each other and therefore against God. He wanted Ezekiel to understand another key component of his ministry, and that is he was responsible to warn. He was not responsible to convince the Israelites to believe the message or obey the message. He was not responsible to persuade them to come to his side of the table. Persuasion and convincing were not on his job description. This is very important for you and I to remember. It is not our job to convince or persuade. It is simply our job to warn. We are here to speak the truth in love. It is up to the Holy Spirit to work that message into the heart of the listener. It is up to the listener to decide whether they are going to believe it and accept it or disregard it and continue on their path. We get into trouble when we start to think that the message is from us and that we have to convince others of its importance. Speaking the truth in love means you understand the boundary and separation between you and the listener. If they listen, they listen. If they disregard, that is their choice and they are free to do that. The consequences come when we, in fear, refuse to provide the message 
Delivering the message is providing an opportunity of freedom. But it's not up to us to make them walk in that freedom because it, then it's not freedom anymore. The message is owned by God. He is the author. Ezekiel is the messenger. He receives the message from God for himself first and then delivers it as a warning to his community. These are the concluding thoughts. First and foremost, we cannot give to others what we don't first possess ourselves. How can we lead people to Jesus Christ as the way, truth, and life if we ourselves don't first really understand it and believe it? How can we tell others to walk in love if we ourselves aren't first walking in love? We must internalize the message for ourselves first. We are custom made by God for purpose. This is one of the most exciting takeaways for me in, in the, this particular chapter of Ezekiel. Our personalities are custom designed by God for a specific purpose. And in the hands of God, they are amazing instruments. Embrace the you God created. Allow his spirit and his truth to refine that personality into his tool of love. We must remember who owns the message. God is the message. It is him we are speaking of. We must not confuse the message with the messenger. The message is for us first and then to be given out to others. But God is the one authoring the message. We are responsible to warn, not to convince. We simply deliver truth in love and allow the freedom for those who are going to hear and receive it, to hear and receive it for themselves. God is sovereign over time and place. God warned Ezekiel that at a certain point they were going to actually hold him captive and tie him up with ropes because they don't want to hear what he has to say. And as a response to that, God is going to not even allow him to speak. His mouth will be closed by God himself until the right time to give the message. What we must remember there is, again, God is the author, which also means he is sovereign over the timing of its delivery. Be what I take that to mean for us today is that we must be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit and speak only when we sincerely experience the unction of the Holy Spirit to speak. The timing of a message is every bit as important as the message itself. And love is always the purpose. 
The Apostle Paul said that though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I'm a clanging gong and a crashing cymbal. In other words, I'm nothing but noise. So let's always remember the goal. And that is love. So with that, we are concluding chapter three. <laughs> we did it. We got through chapter three. <laughs> Next week, it's chapter four. And uh, guess what? There's 48 books <laughs> in Ezekiel. So I may be trying to do maybe a little bit of um, paraphrasing from some of this. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, let me just check and see if we got any comments here. Okay, we're just doing good. We're doing good. So, hey, and guess what? We made it 30 minutes. And uh, I booked this time for about 45. So we're actually doing really, really good. Um, love to hear how this uh, is going for you all. I would encourage you to be reading the book of Ezekiel for yourself in preparation for these studies. Um, next week, like I said, we'll be in chapter four. And that is the beginning of the actual prophecies being delivered uh, by Ezekiel to the Israelites. I know we're all excited for getting into Ezekiel 38 and the prophecies that came to Ezekiel for this time that we're in um, and uh, that we're looking forward to and uh, may even experience. So um, I know I'm, I'm anxious to get there too, but I, I really want to be careful that I cover the context of Ezekiel. It's so easy to take these prophetic books out of context, and I want to be very careful that I honor context. So that's why I'm taking it step by step, and there's so much good stuff to learn. Well, anyway, that concludes Ezekiel's Bible study for today. And again, this was Ezekiel chapter three. Next week, we will be into chapter four. And uh, so go ahead and do your homework. Read chapter uh, four. And I will see you here next week. And let me know how this is going for you. God bless.